Hello everyone, my name is Mr. N Jersey and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are back with the 99th episode of the Top 5 Weekly. Yes, we are getting even more closer to the 100th episode of the series. Now, in this series, if you don't know and haven't seen it before, we take a look at the most popular workshop creations on Steam, we analyze each one of the submissions, we discover their features, and finally we test them out here in the world of Stormworks. But before we get started, if you are enjoying these videos, don't forget that like and subscribe button. And while you're watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and what else you'd like to see in my future videos. So that all said, let's get straight into it and get started with this week's episode. And getting started with the first creation, we have the C1A1 Grizzly Main Battle Mech. Now this is a creation done by Chris Peckram. Now as the name, it's going to be a main battle mech. Uh, it's got these wheels at the bottom, uh, really quite interesting actually design on this. Uh, it looks really cool in terms of detailing. So very interested to see how this one works and how it drives around here in the world. Storm mech's also got two guns on it, so how those work too. Um, so let's go and spawn it and see how it works. And spawning in the first creation, this mech looks really cool and you don't really see these here in Stormworks. That's really quite nice to see this. Uh, and the detailing looks exceptional. You can see here on the wheels, we've got a little bit of rust or a little bit of dirt, uh, almost got like a little scraping along there where the paint is kind of like chipped away. He's done a fantastic, or she's done a fantastic job with this. Looks absolutely incredible. Uh, let's see, okay, so they've got wheels on this, like four supports there. Looks like we've also got some rope here and there's some, looks like a winch. Some rope anchors, spotlights, we have the main turret there for the tank or the mech. Uh, some more rope anchors around the sides. Let's keep on going towards the back. Just some more rust and scrape and things like that. Uh, cool, we got at the back here, looks like a little bit of an unplate, obviously Canadian flag. Looks like we got like a little bit of the armor on the sides. We also have winch up and down. So I'm guessing that one is to control this winch here at the front. Okay, along with that, we can go and climb up the ladder. You can see the detailing has even got their little bit of like exhaust fumes or oil from the engine. That's really cool. Uh, let's get up here. So jump up and then we're on top here. So we have two hatches. Uh, I'm not too sure which one goes to where. I'm guessing this is the gunner and this one's dry. I don't know. We'll find soon find out. Uh, looks like we have some sensors and things and we also have a radar detector. Okay. We also have some equipment here and then two toggle buttons. I'm not too sure what those do just yet. They're not labeled, so I'm not 100% too sure yet. Okay, let's go and jump inside. Cool. Okay, so we can close that hatch and we are straight away presented with a huge screen. Uh, we have got a camera field of view. We got spread. So we got spread, knee, starter, and then fuel valve slash kill switch. Okay, uh, some more equipment, and that's pretty much about it, and there's nothing else in here. So let's get into the seat. Okay, the screen turns on. Uh, we have one to fire the 105 millimeter, two to fire the 7.62, three is night vision on the main screen, four is for lights. So those are just the front spotlights there, and it looks like one light here at the back. Uh, we have brakes, which is five. Uh, let's fire the cannon. Okay, that's pretty cool. So it seems like there's an engine somewhere hidden, but you can see that's pretty cool. Um, then we have the small little 7.62 <laughs> underneath. Oh, that's look at that. That is really cool. I like how he's done that. Detailing is great. Obviously, you can see the recoil when it fires. The whole thing moves, which is really cool. Okay, so we have camera field of view, so you can see we can zoom in and zoom out on this camera if we want to. We can even zoom all the way back. Uh, what does this guy do? So, this just looks like a monitor station. This guy has camera night vision. He has smoke grenades, smoke grenades, and then radar shaft. Ooh, okay. Cool. Uh, let's go and get back into here. So, we're going to get started on. So that's the engines on. We have the spread. So what is that? So that I think spreads us out further. And then obviously you can do this, which is okay. So you can see that just brings it out wider. Okay, so you can now see it's like super wide. Uh, we can do knee. Ooh, okay. So you can go really high up, or you can go really low like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, okay, now 
we should in theory just be able to use WSAD, I think. So, yeah, look at that. What? That is awesome. See how our handle's getting over this part here? Yeah, no issues at all. <laughs> that is really cool. Very different. Uh, can we get the knees down? Let's see if we can get this quite low. Yeah, look at that. Can imagine going around firing the cannon. That is really cool. Get some smoke grenades and things, which this guy has. So smoke grenades is two. So smoke grenades go up on either side. That is really cool. You can move the turret left and right. So you move it left, it pops around itself back, so you actually have to hold it. And then you can move turrets up and down too. Wow, that's cool. Camera moves with it, which is quite nice too. Man, this is a really cool creation. I love the detailing. Everything just seems to work. There's not really much in terms of setup and stuff. Um, so he's done, yeah, he's done a really good job with this. Um, and very differently out of the box and very unique here in Stormworks. Uh, what a great creation. Cool. Let's go and move on to the next one. And moving on to the next creation, we have the DHC2 Beaver. This is a standard version done by Sir Murtak. Now, this is meant to be a plane that you can use to carry, um, obviously, cargo around, your passengers. It's meant to operate in very tight places, um, require very minimal maintenance. It looks really cool. Uh, the front design is really quite nice and interesting that I like about this. I think he's also got a float plane version about it too. Um, so yeah, overall, it just looks really cool. So let's go and spawn it and see how it flies here in the world of Stormworks. And moving on to the next creation, this looks Absolutely awesome. I love the design of this plane, especially here in the front with obviously the engine the propeller. He's done a really good job with this. Uh, you can see we've got some exhaust coming out the underneath of this engine here with the propellers. Uh, he's done a great job with detailing. It's like some generators and just some beacon locators on top there for detailing. Uh, we've got the landing supports here with the wheels. Uh, looks like a way to get in so we got a cockpit and we have door and we have another door there okay so quite a few doors even got a little bit of a standing piece there which is pretty cool uh go around the back not much just obviously the wings tail and some more wings on the other side looks like we got a rope hook there too um, i didn't see anything about refueling or recharging possibly underneath the operation so this is where it looks like the fuel is okay is there anything to re Oh, there you go. So refueling is just over there and yeah, cool. Let's go and see the cargo area. So this is a cargo door. Okay, so you got you can put little crates in here. Let's use the handle to get up in here. Okay, and I think I disconnected something. Um, yes, so the rope there. So yeah, nice little area here for some cargo. Obviously you can get some very small containers or so on and so forth for doing some delivery missions. Another door there and then we come into this area which looks like the crew area. Let's just close that door. Let's get into the crew area here. So a little crew door and we have quite a bit of seats. We've got four seats here for passengers, which is obviously quite useful going around. Close this door if I can. Uh, there we go. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of equipment here on the floor. Let's get the lights on so you can see we've got first aid. We've also got firefighting station. We've got a flare gun. Uh, nice detailing, even though the cabin is quite small. He's done paint blocks there. Uh, and then we have the pilot seat and a passenger seat. So passenger seat has access to battery and also the engine ignition and the heaters. Okay, uh, we got a little checklist here also that we're going to be following. So battery and so on and so forth. Probably get the engine ignition off for now. Um, cool, we've got a transponder, we've got a throttle lever. It looks like we have tailwheel lock and parking brake. Get the parking brake on. Uh, we also got instrument lights, navigation lights, beacon lights, landing lights. Okay, altitude hold. Flaps up and down, okay. Tow brake, throttle, and then radio push to talk. Okay, cool. So let's get everything up and running. So we've got all the lights and things on. We can get our ignition on now. Then we have got brakes on, of course. Uh, we're going to get our flaps. Let's do extend. Okay, so let's do 0 0.4. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, we should be able to, in theory, get our parking brake off now. Get our throttle up. 
And let's get the throttle up. Full throttle. We're going to try and take off from here. Yeah, look at that. What a easy, quick takeoff. Yeah, let's get flaps up. Cool, so we're now flying nice and level. Oh, it looks so cool. Such a nice, small little plane. Obviously, to fly around the world of Stormworks with. Uh, looks like it handles really well. Quite sensitive, but at the same time, it's pretty straightforward to fly. It's not doing anything funky or anything, so yeah, good job on that. Uh, it's just got this altitude hold, so I'm guessing that just holds the current altitude. And then we'll just keep you flying in that altitude, which is pretty nice. Uh, nothing really else going on here. That's pretty much about it. It's very straightforward, very easy to fly, get that off. Uh, and then you can come down. I want to see how well this glides. So if I kill the throttle. So that's currently no throttle. Okay, it doesn't do too badly considering obviously here in Stormwax usually as soon as you get rid of the throttle everything just falls to the ground. There's not really much aerodynamics here in game. Um, but yeah, that's pretty good. And obviously we can even, even if we wanted to, I'm sure we could probably land here. It would probably be pretty easy. Uh, it's obviously not the best or ideal situation for landing. But uh, yeah, you can see there, keep the nose up a little bit. Toe brakes on. And there we go, we've landed on really not really a flat area at all and it did perfectly fine. Get throttle up again and I'm sure this will take off with no issues. Yep, get up. Look at that. So I didn't even need the flaps or anything um, and it just went and took off. So a lovely little plane, definitely nice and easy to use, nothing complex. Uh, and just, yeah, just an overall really cool plane. It looks beautiful too. Let's go and move on to the next creation. And moving on to the next creation, we have the B-29A Super Fortress. This is a creation done by Cod Cape. Now, this is meant to be his representation of the Boeing BA-29A Super Fortress. Uh, obviously, it's a bomber from World War II. A uh, beautiful design from what I can see here on the workshop. Looks like he's got a really spot on in terms of the cockpit and the front of the actual plane itself and the nose. Um, so let's see how this one flies. Of course, we are going to be dropping bombs out of it. And we're going to see how that works too. So let's go and spawn in. And spawning in the next creation, this bomber looks really good. He's got the actual shape and the fuel cellage. It looks like he's got it down to the T. It looks absolutely incredible. The amount of wedges that he's used here is a lot, um, but it just makes the plane look really nice. You see it completely round. The front window assembly, he, wow. That he's obviously spent a lot of time modifying the pipes and the windows and things in the front, but it looks really cool. I wish we just had windows in game that could do that straight away. But um, he's done a great job modifying all that. Uh, let's have a little walk around. So it looks like we've got landing gear at the front. We've got um, some turrets here at the bottom and at the top. We have the propellers on either side. Okay. So we've got quad engines on this. Quad propellers. Uh, more landing gear. Yep. And it goes up in there. We've got a little window on that side. Another turret at the back. Another turret at the back. And yeah, that's pretty much about it now. The question is... How do we get in? Oh, okay, we're getting over here. Okay, so a little ladder and a little hatch to get in. Uh, hello? Let's try. Okay, so it doesn't... Okay, there we go. So I have to crouch, crouch jump. Okay, so we're inside. I want to see if we can get some lights on somehow. Lights? There we go. Cool. Those are tunnel lights. Where are the lights for this area? Main power, okay, I don't want main power, I just want lights. Uh, okay, we'll go through, let's go through the back first. So we have this little tunnel that goes through, uh, all the way through to the back, and in the back, what do we have down here? So it looks like we have some firefighting equipment, we have a seat for the gunners, okay. We also have another little seat, observation seat there, another one here, so I'm guessing this would be like your radio. That's pretty cool, so you can sit here, look out, that's nice. Uh, let's check out the gunner. So, up, down, and then fire six. Okay, so nothing really happens when you fire. Um, left, right, up, and down. Okay. Okay, so hold on, wait. Can we control? Do we control another one from here? Guess not. Oh no, we're well, controlling both of them. Okay, so you can see there. Oh wow, we're actually controlling all of them. Okay, that's pretty cool. 
Okay, so let's move on from there. So we can go down and carry on to more of a tunnel here. So some batteries. Uh, looks like we just got some crew storage and things. Another hatch in there. This plane just keeps on going. Uh, we've got some lights in here. So this is firefighting extinguisher. And we can move all the way back to the rear gunner. And did that seat just go up? No, it didn't. Maybe it did. I don't know. Maybe I'm going crazy. And then this gunner here at the back we can control with W and S. Cool. Okay. Let's uh, now I'll figure out how we can get out of this seat. Um, usually what they do is they put another seat behind here. Is there another? Yes, there is. Cool. Okay, so there's just another seat there for you to get out. Uh, cool. Let's go through. Let's get rid of the light switch. Light switch. There we go. I'll get through the cabin here. Make our way through down here. And then, oh, there's a little hatch down there. What is that for? Okay, I don't think it's for anything. Uh, it's, yeah, no, it's just there. Okay, cool. So let's go through to the bridge area. Little, little sign there. Okay, so get those lights off. We have a radio power. It's a little radio there too. Yeah, push to talk. We got cabin lights. That's what I was looking for earlier. Some more equipment. Looks like we have an autopilot system over here. We have the engineer seat, which we'll go through in a few minutes. Uh, we have pilots over here and we have pilots over here. And then we have the bomber's seat. Okay, so bomb base, release doors, arm racks. Okay, so we definitely are going to be trying that out. Uh, and that's where we came up. Okay, so engineer seat here has got a little bit of a uh, checklist. So we need to get main power on. So main power on. So we've got that, perfect. Uh, make sure leave it to one. Mixture. Okay. Mixture leave one. So this apparently will be for modular engine updates, apparently. Okay. Uh, we have air valves on. So air valves on. Okay. Uh, throttle lever to 10. Okay, so. Yeah, I guess that's 10. Uh, and then we need to get one, two, three, four exhaust on. So one, two, three, four. Then we need to get the coolant pumps, then the fuel pumps. Okay, we've got that on. We'll need to get the crawl flaps open. Okay, so on, 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 on. So all that open. And then we need to get the older starter for two seconds. So that's all four of the engines up now. You can see them just out the window here. It's really cool. Okay. Uh, what else do we need to get on? We need to get boarding hatch locked. Lock boarding hatch. Cool. So we've got that on. Uh, and then we can do heaters if we want to, but we don't need that on. Cool. Uh, we also have this little autopilot table here. So just a simple autopilot. Our uh, alt hold coordinates. Yep. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and then we have pilot and co-pilot seat. So let's go on pilot seat. Throttles doing its own thing. Gear up, gear down. Flaps up and down. Frequency up, down. Push to talk and... Bombers control, okay. Engage thrust, uh, prop pitch, your, okay. So we need to do, get the parking brake off. So that's the light there. Exp engine exploding system. Okay, interesting. Uh, we need to get the engine thrust on, which is one. Okay. Uh, we need to get prop pitch up to about 50%. So is there a dial here for prop pitch? Doesn't look like one, so we're just gonna increase it, I guess. Okay, so we're going down the runway now. Uh, then taxi the runway left and right. Um, engage thrust, we need to get off. Okay, and then throttle lever to 30, prop pitch 100%, engage thrust again on, and then we need to pull up on the elevator and lift off. Okay, so those are the instructions in the workshop. We're going to try and do our best here to follow them. We're going to just taxi out a bit. Get our throttle up a little more. Oh, sorry, our prop pitch. You can see our throttle still here is around 10. Looks like he's using a throttle sync system. So it's syncing between the two throttles and all three throttles around the whole plane. Oh, look at this. It looks really cool. I'm going to start slowing down here a bit. We might need to get the brakes on to do a turn. Get the throttle down. 
Yeah, keep turning. Turning quite sharply, which is pretty cool. Yeah, let's go turn it. Okay, so we're going to get lined up on the runway here, and then we're going to get the thrust off, and we're going to get the thrust lever up to about 30%. Also, I think we need to get our actual prop pitch down to zero also. I'm going to get prop pitch all the way down. Oh, that actually goes in reverse, so we need to turn that off. I think we can just turn the thrust off, which is one. So there we go, and parking brake on. Okay, so parking brake can go off now. We have our thrust completely off. We can get our throttle lever up to about 30%. Or 30. Okay, which is that one there. That's perfect. Uh, it doesn't say anything about using flaps. So I'm actually just going to put flaps down. All right, cool. Hopefully they'll help us take off. We don't need to do anything else. And then in theory, uh, we can do prop pitch all the way up. And then we're going to press 1 to engage our thrust. There we go. Let's try and pick up a little bit of speed here. The plane should be going up by itself because we have the flaps, which it is. Look at that. Looks really cool. Okay, now we can get the landing gear up. Goes and folds away nice and cleanly. Yeah, that looks cool, man. Okay, and we should be able to get our flaps up. Do manual control now. Cool. And we're now going up. Make sure we're on full throttle here. We are. We're still climbing. It's a big plane. Cool, that looks really cool. So we're going to continue to climb here a bit, um, which is perfect. I don't think I really need to be in that control room. Oh, uh, well, into the pilot seat. So here we can start arming the bomb bays. So that goes and opens up the bomb bays underneath here. Look at that. Oh, that looks cool. Uh, this should then go and open. We're going to arm all the bombs. Okay, we should theoretically be quite higher than what we are now. Uh, and let's go and release the bombs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Look at that. Only here we had explosions. <laughs> and all the bombs just went in. Oh man, that's really cool. Obviously go and close that off now, so the bomb days are going to close. Ah, that was really nice. Yeah, so overall just a beautiful plane. Uh, it seems like it flies really well. Obviously you can go and make some turns here. Look at that. Imagine doing some bombing runs. It turns really nicely too, actually. Yeah, that is very clean and hard to turning. He's done a great job. Well, she, she or he has done a really great job on this plane. Uh, definitely one you guys can go check out. Detailing, I love it. Um, use of blocks that we have in game, really good. Yeah, just overall a really nice plane and very smooth in performance too. It doesn't lag, no issues, easy to fly. Um, very nice. Let's go and move on to the next creation. And moving on to the next creation, we have the T2 Tanker SS Peloton. This is a creation that was done by Person Yajo. Now, this is meant to be a tanker from 1944 that was built in Portland, Oregon. Looks absolutely incredible. Quite a big actual tanker itself. Um, there's a little bit of a story behind it. Starting a procedure, there's also one of those. Um, but it looks like it's got a whole boiler system inside there, turbine, all the really cool things. And the interior looks absolutely incredible from what I can see here on the workshop. Um, so very interested to explore that and kind of get stuck into it and we'll see how it drives here in the world of Stormworks. Uh, so let's go and spawn this in and see how it works. And spawning in the next creation, this tanker looks really cool. I love the design, the paint scheme looks really cool too. I love the like this bluish grey colour black and obviously just these orange accents and all the rigging also. Performance wise it's actually running really smoothly. I thought it would be quite laggy but it seems like the creators obviously used not that many pivots on the creation so it seems like it's yeah performance is perfect um even out here at sea man this looks really cool now we are I actually don't even know where to start i guess we're going to start at the back here so it looks like it's got some life rafts uh with some equipment in there you can just push them off and you can obviously use the davids to up and down lower extend 
Ah, uh, we can move around. Let's go through here. So engine access. So I think this is the one part that is detailed, the interior. So straight away we come into here. And okay, so a little bit of a pipe here to get in. Look at that. Man, that looks cool. Electrical circuit breakers on. Okay. Uh, we have another for engine room access. So where does this lead to? Open. So that doesn't open. Okay. Then we have some just some breakers all over the place. Uh, this doesn't open either. And where does this go? Okay, so this looks like it goes to like a crew seating area slash dining area. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to check out every single room of this ship. This is locked. This is locked. That's open. Okay, so that goes to the front of deck. Okay, cool. Now, I think there is lighting. I'm not too sure. I did see I did see some lights there. I'm guessing we need to probably get something running first. So you can kind of see the boiler, I think, from here or the funnel something let's keep on going down looks like we have a boiler room now he, he or she does have instructions for this so we have to head down to the boilers and flip the switch uh so we're gonna go down to here which is guessing the boilers okay uh we can carry on across here yep so turn on for three seconds cool and those are now locked, so those are the boilers in there. Uh, we have steering gears and through here. Okay, so it looks like throttle lever. We have control from here, so we can actually control it. Oh, wow. So I wonder if you could control it actually by pushing that. That's pretty cool, I think. Okay, we need to go to the turbine room. We need to open two steam valves before we do anything else. Oops. Something sounds like it's exploding. Steam valves, use them. There we go. Other one. Steam valve. Yep, there we go. I don't know if we're moving, I don't know if we're doing anything. Okay, we've done that. Okay, so we activate the turbine. Now we need to go to the main panel, grab the helm, and press 1 to increase the most throttle. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to that later on. So you can see generators are active. Keep on going down. Wow. Okay, let's go down then. What? This interior is huge. We've got a little helm here. We got uh, just for decor, emergency pumps, engine room lighting. That's what we need. Exterior lighting. Okay, so that kicks a little bit of lag in, but man, does it look cool down here. This keeps on going down and down and down. Oh, this is really cool. You could spend so much time just exploring all this. Ooh, yeah, probably one of the most detailed engine rooms in terms of levels and things in here. It looks incredible. Look at all that. So I think we can actually control from here. So there's a helm here and one to increase power. Okay. So we're actually moving. That. Okay, well, we'll come back to that later on. Ah, that looks cool. This engine room is so detailed. Close that door. Can I keep on going up? I can. Okay, there's another door there. We can keep on going up here. Can I go out? Yes, I can. I have duck first. Okay. Cool, and then we're back on the deck again. Uh, we can go up here. What is up here now? Nothing else. Just some skylights, obviously looking down. We have the exhaust over there too. Uh, let's go around. Anything at the back here? Not much. Okay. Cool. So let's carry on. Close that door. Uh, let's carry on. Okay. So I'm gonna jump across here. Obviously, this is now we're on the tanker deck, so you can see all the pipes and things. I don't, th I don't know actually if this does contain, or you can actually put fluid inside here. I don't see any like ports or anything. No, it doesn't look like it. I could be wrong though. Uh, let's carry on going through. So we then have the front, which I don't think if I'm correct, there is nothing in here. This is just pretty much for decorations, yeah, because there's no way for us to go up. Oh, there is. Okay, let's go up one level. 
nothing in there. Some more lifeboats. Let's go up here. So this is the bridge, I'm guessing. Yeah. Is there a way for us to get up one level more level? No, there isn't. I can't get up there. Hmm. Unless there's a, there must be a ladder or something inside. Okay, so let's go in here. So we have the bridge. Uh, we'll come back to the bridge in a few minutes. Uh, let's carry on through here. We have staircase to nothing. Okay. We have a radio room inside here. So it's got a little radar, frequency, yep. And chart room. So this would be where your maps and things would be. Uh, there's a little map screen here. A little navigation system, which is perfect. Uh, and then we have the bridge. So exterior lights. And then we got spotlights, apparently laggy. <laughs> okay, we'll get the spotlights off. Uh, probably get interior lights off too. Uh, we got a couple seats, a couple of binoculars and things. We have a, what is this, sinking? Lockable button. And then minimal sinking. So requirements, 40% fog, 90% rain, and 60% wind. And that's ideal conditions for sinking. Okay, so you can sink this. Wow. Uh, and then we have the helm. So this is where we control the, obviously send the telegraph down to increase or decrease throttle. We can also control the rudder. So I think we are maxed out in our speed currently. And you can see the hull here looks really cool. So how well does this thing turn? Can't even see the back of the ship from third person. Yeah, so it actually turns really easily, funny enough. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Remember this, imagine how this game has come so far. I mean, you look at that and what you can do here in Stormworks. What makes you love the game sometimes. This is a really cool creation. I love the detailing. As I said, I love the, the color scheme he's got, especially with his little yellow accents uh, on the mask and things. Really, really spot on. Uh, and performance is amazing with this creation. There's still the front section we can check out. I use some, looks like some tracks there for the anchor system. Um, but yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Cool. Let's go and move on to the next creation. And moving on to the last creation of the episode, we have the modernized YT-1300 light freighter. Uh, this is a creation done by Snome. Now, this, of course, Millennium Falcon freighter, uh, you guys all know it from Star Wars, uh, looks absolutely incredible. Detailing on the outside, exceptional from the workshop, of course. The interior looks just as good. It's a very interesting how this one flies. Art works here in the world of Stormwax. Uh, and yeah, just see how it goes. So let's spawn in. And moving on to the last creation, we have the Millennium Vulcan Freighter. Now, this looks really cool. The amount of detail on this is really cool. Size wise, I'm not too sure, obviously, if it's one to one in terms of size, um, but it's big enough. Definitely not a small creation at all. Um, I don't even know where to start, but you can see, look at the detailing along here. It looks really cool. Really quite nice. So it looks like we have a door there. Um, it's got underneath here. So refueling looks like landing. We have the cargo lifter uh, landing gear. And then looks like another, is that a door? It is. So it's a cargo door of some sort. So we'll have to come back to that later on. Uh, looks like we have a little ramp here to go up also. Cool. And then we have the, I'm guessing these are the thrusters at the back, if I'm correct. Okay, so let's go and get up. I like how it folds down and we have these little lights here. Okay, so we can walk up here. Uh, we have the ramp, which we can close. We have a small keypad, a ramp. We have another door there, which goes onto the outside. Uh, we can then obviously close this. Okay, so we have another door. Where does this go to? So, this looks like a little camera, obviously a bed in here, and, okay. This is like a toilet of some sort. Interesting. Okay, uh, let's carry on going through here. Lovely detail, and look at the paint blocks going around the floor. Wow. Uh, so hallway lights are currently on. Sorry, it's not that bright. Uh, looks like a little kitchen in here. Man, even a little, so there's like no, another compartment down there. That's a bedroom. Man, that looks detailing in here. It's exceptional. Let's carry on going through here. So it's got little keypads all around. Uh, looks like we have a, another door. 
So this goes into like some type of engine room or thruster room. So a little monitor, some pipes and winches. That looks cool too. Uh, we've got another door here. So this is main power room. So you can see we have some circuit breakers we can turn on. I don't think those do anything to be fair. Um, there is a little bit of a starting up procedure, but we'll get through that later once we get into the bridge. Uh, we have another door here. So this looks like a little bit of a cargo slash storage area. Um, another hatch on that side. We have another door, which will, okay. So this goes to the bridge if I'm correct. So we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Uh, we have a little living area room, a seat here, little keypads, another bed, another door, which goes, okay. So this goes into the cargo room area. Look at all this area around here and look at the floor. How many heaters did he use? It looks cool, but wow. Um, so we've got lights that we can put on here. We have this little cargo area. So it looks like a rail system that you can go and pull out, winch up, winch down, the throttle lever, left, forwards, backwards. Nice. And then obviously this is the hatch that we opened up earlier on, which we can now go and close. So you can get some cargo in here. It looks like he's got rails. So you could sterically rail some stuff in. Uh, let's open that up. Let's get out of here. Let's close that in. Okay, uh, let's go into the bridge. So the bridge is down here, if I'm correct. So we carry on down here. Is there lights? There is, cool. I like all these panels just everywhere with these paint blocks. Really cool. Okay, so we have co-pilot, pilot, and then padded seat. So there are some instructions. So it says, uh, use the right seat in the cockpit. Okay, so we're gonna get into there. Uh, activate the starter. So there should be an option for us to get a starter on. So there we go. Okay, so start is on. Um, once started, up, down, use arrow keys to control vertical thrust. Okay, so up, down, fair enough. Um, with auto hover on, hold key three to increase or so to increase desired, four to decrease. Okay. Okay, so you can turn auto hover on and then you can use three to increase. Ooh, that was quick. And then four to decrease. Okay, that's pretty cool. Look at that. Oh, look at the lights at the back there. That looks so cool. Uh, it's a little bit, seems like it's doing its own thing there. Uh, I'm gonna take the auto hover off. So five is take it off. And now it's just trying to do its own thing. Yeah, let's get auto hover on again. So hold down. Yeah. I keep on bringing it down here. Take it off again. No, put it. I'm gonna leave it on. Um. Okay. Cool. Once off the ground, double tap six to raise landing gear. Okay. So all the landing gear goes and raises up there underneath the vehicle. That's cool. Okay. Um, to activate uh, forward flight, simply hold the one key until you reach your desired speed. Okay, cool. So. Cool. Okay, so alt up. And then one to increase. Keep on increasing. Any options? Okay, so that's maximum drive throttle. I guess we could increase that too. And here we have connectors, which that's for the crane operator. Got some heads up stuff. It's cool. Drive through and warm. Wow. It's really cool. Looks like there's even a seat there for a gunner. Yeah, you can see there's a seat there that goes and pulls up. I'll let you guys explore that part. But uh, man, this looks really cool. He's done a fantastic job. A radar there. Detailing looks good. It's pretty smooth to drive. There's not like jumping up and down and going all over the place. So it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, this looks like the top speed. Now, if I'm correct, he said this can go in the water too. Now, I don't know if I want to test that. I guess we could. Um, 
obviously he said obviously if you do go in the water the speed is going to decrease quite a bit now i think all the hatches are closed i remember closing all the hatches as we were going through it so i guess let's see if this is going to go in the water don't see why it wouldn't uh, let's go down obviously i don't want to crash it here i'm trying it kind of doesn't want to go yeah there we go now flying through the water no issues at all can we go out yep we'll pick up some speed man look at that that's cool it's done a great job with that really has so much detailing the in interior i think the interior is probably the best part of this creation because it just looks so cool and sounds so hard to walk <laughs> we're now moving around and we get in the pilot seat can, can can you stop forward thrust There we go. Okay, I should be able to walk around now. Oh, it's still very hard to walk around. I think we're still moving, aren't we? Okay, I'm not going to move anymore. We, yeah, we're, we're dropping speed, I think. Um, But yeah, this is a really cool... Really, really cool creation. Um, Definitely one you guys can go check out and play around with. As I said earlier, performance-wise, it's running really smoothly. So no performance issues there. So I think everyone should be able to run this uh, with not much issues. And yeah, just a beautiful creation. So really great job on this one. So with that said, I think that's a great place to end this episode off with. As earlier I mentioned, this is the 99th episode of the Top 5 Weekly. So next one is the 100th. And I've got something else special planned for all of you. So definitely keep an eye on that one. But as always, I hope you have enjoyed this and found some entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.